Good evening, traders. Tonight, we have trendy John McKeever, Director of Supply and Demand Trading at Simpler Trading. Tonight, he's going to be talking about his supply and demand system for consistent gains and how he has developed a proven system that has achieved a 70% plus win rate. As Simpler's newest full-time trader, he leads initiatives to provide traders with unparalleled insights into the big players of the market and enables them to reach new heights in all market conditions. Throughout the webinar, you may notice interactive features such as polls and offers popping up on your screen. We have a chat panel on the left where you can chat with the audience as well as a Q&A panel on the right where you can ask questions that will be answered by our expert moderator team as well as John at the end of the presentation. For optimal viewing, you can hover over the presentation and click to go full screen at the top right of the video. And now, live from sunny Florida, it's Trendy John McKeever. Hey everybody, welcome tonight. How's everybody doing? Where's everybody coming from? Are you guys pumped up to hear about supply and demand secrets? Um, I am Jonathan McKeever, AKA Trendy John, the creator of the Trendy Methodology. Um, I have 10 years of experience in the market and I am uh, once again, seven years of that 10 years, I have taught people just like you from around the world. All right. And I cannot wait to teach you tonight. I have a lot of cool surprises here. All right. And I can't wait to show you at the end of this. So 10 years of trading experience, seven years of, of teaching people all around the world. That means a lot to me. That means customers first. I have 21 years in the Air Force, but what's that got to do with trading? That means that I have really taken the time to really learn and, and apply the three pillars of the Air Force, what I learned, integrity, service before self, and excellence and all I do. And you're going to see that, folks, because I'm going to show you some things that you haven't seen before, such as transparency and so forth. So supply and demand. I'm going to teach you how to think and execute like the big players. Basically, guys, I need you to put on your caps. You got to be thinking like institutions if you want to have an edge in this market. So I feel very, very confident that this this supply and demand is the edge you are looking for. So in those seven years that I've been teaching and 10 plus years that I've been trading, I believe that you and I are no different, okay? The only difference is, is that I have some methodologies that I think you could use to use with your trading. Along the way, we all came across struggles, things like consistency, getting stopped out just to watch price go in the direction you knew it was going to go, but you didn't really have a process. Planning your trades. How do you plan a trade? I'm going to show you that tonight. Execution. How do you execute a trade and have confidence that you're going to feel good about that trade and that you're okay, that your risk management is where it needs to be? I don't want you to revenge trade. I'm going to show you how to avoid those kind of things. Allocation, transparency, and most of all, time management. So what do I mean by allocation? Let me go ahead and answer that. And how much do I risk per trade? That is a great question. And so allocation. So the big thing here on number seven, what I want you guys to understand is that I always tell people, I want you to understand what your number is. So John, what does that mean? That means every time you go into a trade, I want you to think like, differently. I want you to say, hey, if I'm putting 500 bucks on this, there are two things that can happen in your trade. You can either win or you can lose that $500. And I need you to be comfortable with your allocation so that when we take the next trade, if you happen to take a loss, you're going to be ready for the next trade and you are going to be confident that the next setup is going to make you some money. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So here's what you're going to learn tonight what the trendy methodology and process looks like. I mean, first of all, we need to know what it looks like on a chart. What trendy stands for, that's important. How to think like an institution and how to do that automatically. What supply and demand looks like on a chart and why supply and demand trades give you that time that you need to live your dream lifestyle. So, 
Why is this for you? Well, first of all, guys, this is a proprietary methodology. Now, listen, I didn't make up supply and demand, but what I'm telling you is I came up with some really cool stuff, including my premium indicators that we'll talk about. And get this, they're free. And we'll talk about that at the end of this session. The methodology is to help you earn calm and consistent returns. There's nothing more that gets to me than a trader who has a hard time executing because they've been taught the wrong way. They don't understand how to execute a plan. And most of all, they just don't understand what to look for. I'm going to show you that. This is a high probability where the markets turn. And we can identify that just by locating two candle formations. It really comes down to that. So real-time transparent alerts from my broker. And by the way, nobody is doing this. And I cannot wait to show you this. Guys, if you're already in the room, give us a holler. Give us a heart. Give us something. I want to know who's out there. And am I right about this? Who is doing the transparent alerts? We are. And we're here to be transparent like you've never seen before. Also, consistency is very, very important. So... Guys, if you're a day trader, a swing trader, a position trader, Forex, crypto, I don't care. If you're using a chart, whether you've been in the market for 20 years or you've only been in the market for six months, this is the edge that you are looking for. So what does Trendy stand for? So T stands for trend. I want you to be on the right side of the market every time we get in. Does this mean that we're going to win every trade? Heck no. But one thing is for certain, I'm going to teach you how to identify that trend. And I'm going to also teach you how to stay in a trend range. Why is this important? That's what the R stands for, because all traders are different. Not everybody lives on a monthly chart. So I need to teach you how to look at a yearly chart, a daily chart, a four hour chart, a five minute chart. Everybody's different. But I'm going to tell you this. The strategy works across the board. Three to one, that's what the three stands for. I want us to be looking for setups where you are risking one and getting back three. Now, it's not always going to happen, but that's what we strive to do. And I have this amazing indicator called the pre-market zone, PMZ. And I don't know how many people in the crowd tonight are using the PMZ, but if you are, again, hit that heart and tell them like it is because this indicator makes it mechanical and makes it methodical. And you know exactly what you're getting into before the, before the trade even starts. And that's what it's all about. And I'll be showing you that a little bit later. So the N, this is so important. Listen to me right now. No news. Ashley, my wife, my one and only, my backbone, she knows and she will tell you, we do not use news in this house. Matter of fact, we stopped using uh, news about a decade ago. And the reason why we don't use news is because it's just a catalyst to push price into supply and demand. I'm going to show you how to identify supply and demand, and then you are going to learn from me how to execute that zone. And then you're going to look at news different. News comes out, it pushes price there, boom, then we execute the trade. Now, again, D, well, that's why we're here. Demand and supply, folks. This is what it's all about. I'm here to tell you with confidence that I believe that supply and demand is the methodology that everybody should be using. And if you're using something else, that's okay. I'm just saying, put this thing on your tool belt and let's build a mansion together because this is what really helps you create the edge in the market. Why? After everything I just said, it's about you. This is so important. Mark Douglas, one of my favorite, favorite mentors, not around anymore, but man, can you find all kinds of information to help you be more confident up here? Because I always say what's between the ears is what really counts. So it's all about you. I'm going to give you the best levels you've ever seen, but will you be ready to execute with confidence? Yes. So Set and forget trades is a huge part of trendy methodology because I want you to be able to live your lifestyle. That means you need to know before the trade happens how to execute that trade and where we want to execute. I'm going to give that to you folks. Whether you're a mom or a dad and you got to drop off the kids at school, it's summer break, they need time in the pool or whatever it is that you want to do, I want you to be able to look at the charts be ready to execute and go live your life between the stop and the target. That is so important. There are only two things that will happen to you in this trade. 
you will either hit your target or you will be stopped. It doesn't matter how much you stare at the screen, you're not going to make it any different, okay? It's all about consistency, confidence, and understanding the process. Most of the time, we are finished in the trendy trading room by 10.30 in the morning. Now, listen up. That doesn't mean that I'm leaving, and everybody will tell you that. I'm always there to coach you. I'm always there 30 minutes before the market, Monday through Friday, to give you a plan and to help you feel a lot more confident about it. But during that time, once again, you can work on the things that are important as a trader. Again, mentally getting tough, physically getting tough, whether that's on your Peloton bike or going outside for a ride. Okay, I want to show you how to do that. All right, so the trendy definition of supply and demand. I'm going to show you, I'm going to annotate on the screen because I love doing this and people make, you know, they're always like, John loves to draw. And I feel like that's where my passion really comes out. I want you to understand that price, not volume, balance versus imbalance. A lot of people get things mixed up. Supply and demand is not about volume profile. Matter of fact, again, all you need is two formations in the market to identify these. What you will realize is that we want to be on the side of institutions and we can identify that in the market. Then the volume comes in and then retail chases. And I'm going to annotate that and show that to you, okay? So everybody stick with me just for a few seconds here. And this is valid in all market conditions. Now listen up. This is what it's going to look like on your chart. This is a demand zone. This is a supply zone, okay? Most traders, including myself, when I first started, we typically, you know, we'll take a trade, we fill it. Um, usually we don't start with a process or a plan and then we find ourselves immediately taking a trade and then it dropping. Now what happens is this drop typically falls into an imbalance in the market and I'll be showing you what an imbalance looks like here in a few seconds. Now this also is, is pushed on by news, right? News that creates fear, fear. That is pushed into the markets. It's pushed out there for everybody to see it, whether it's on uh, social media or whether it's coming from your neighbor. And what happens here? You take the loss just to immediately see price rebound to the upside. Once it comes to a consolidation area, you typically feel like, hey, I, this, this irritates me. I want to get into the trade. And then you take a trade again. And if you're not aware, the market likes to consolidate that last big move, okay? And when it does this, we start to feel a lot of fear. We're like, gosh, man, we just took a loss. Now I'm taking a loss again. You know, I'm getting out. Screw it. I'm getting out. And then immediately prices push up to the upside. Okay. Now what I'll tell you is around this area right here is when your unusual option activity comes in or the traders that are looking at the volume. Now think about what I'm telling you folks. We want to identify it down here. The traders who are watching volume, it's always the same thing, right? They're saying, well, there's no volume in this move. Or they're saying right about here, hey, volume is coming into the trade. Let's get in. And then immediately, boom, supply zone hits. Sure, you might get a little bit of a blow off. And then it comes right back down. Now, I want you to think about this, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to make anyone feel like, hey, you know, that's, that's a bad thing. This is very normal in the market. Good news is pushed into supply zones and bad news is pushed into demand zones. Okay. This is how the market works. What I want you to do the next time that we line up a trade together is I want you to feel confident. I want you to know where that supply zone is before anybody else. And I want you to know where this demand zone is. And I'm going to say, hey guys, I want you to stay disciplined as, as much as you can and let's stay patient. We are going to execute this trade when price gets in here. John, what's my risk? Okay, what is my risk? And I'm going to tell you it's the difference between this box and this box. And then we have some amazing tools, those indicators I'm going to show you on how to stay in the trade. Okay, and so boom, we get a couple tools. They tell us to go long. Here we go. We're going long. And then we have this beautiful cloud that I'll be going over here soon. It's an EMA cloud. It has these buy signals in it. It has sell signals in it. It is the Cadillac 
of all EMA clouds. And I'm going to show you that here in a second, okay? And I'm going to say, hey, guys, it's going to consolidate here, all right? But our target, I'm going to be your lifeguard, okay? That's what I'm going to do. And I love using analogies where I'm on the water because I live on the water here in Florida. This is a true statement. All right. And I want to be there next to you to say something like, hey, guys, it's OK. We're consolidating. We're holding above the 38.2 of the Fibonacci's. And as long as we do that, I want you to hold on to that trade. And I want us to sell up here into supply. You are going to feel so much better understanding that once you get to this supply zone that you held that trade. And then guess what? Let it sell off. Let those who don't understand and who FOMO into trades, let them buy your calls from you. That's going to be the difference between and what sets you apart from thinking like a retail trader versus an institution. The proof of concept is there when charting back since the inception of the market, folks. Seriously. Okay. So when I get here, all right. When I get here, and so do you need the indicators in order to trade this? Heck no. I'm going to teach you, okay, how to find this stuff manually. However, like I said, there's an amazing deal at the end where basically when you look at it, these indicators are free, all right? Like this is crazy. So yeah, <laughs> um, is this the cloud that uh, I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, so this is the EMA cloud right here, okay? And when we zoom in here, um, I always say like our, our EMA cloud is the Cadillac and what it's doing, okay, is we're using, it's okay, 9, 13, 22, and a 44. That's what I use, okay? There's no secret in that. This is what uses, this is what is the best for my supply and demand strategy, but it works really, really well with the zones. What else you'll notice in here is we get these green arrows. These green arrows let me know where to buy. But it also, when price is dropping, okay, when price is dropping, we're looking to the left and we can self-identify those zones because that's what's going on. These green arrows are identifying zones, all right? And not only that, but the momentum changes off of the EMA cloud. And you'll see that here in a few seconds. You'll see the white to red to green and so forth. And it really, really helps out. So yeah, so I promised you that I would show you what imbalance looks like. And this is kind of crazy because it's not that hard to identify, okay? So first things first, this is a demand zone, folks, and this is a supply zone, all right? Just like that. It's always going to be red and or green. Red is where we want to sell or bring our stops up, and green is where we want to buy, okay? And again, we use a couple tools. Here's one tool right here. This is your uh, TTM Squeeze Pro. All right. And we use the histogram in order to really get that precise entry in these zones. Now, look at this. When I zoom in, does everybody see like these bigger candles right here? These bigger candles, this is what's called an imbalance in the market. First of all, I'm getting a buy signal here. OK, we've identified supply from a previous candle structure that's up and to the left. OK. And right here, because these candles, if you look at them, they're basically like a a bigger candle than the other ones. And that lets us know there's imbalance. And what imbalance does, I want you to think like an institution. You got the strategic team at the top, okay? And then you have your brokers basically in the middle, and then you got your traders. And when the strategic team says, look, I need you to buy um, Apple down at uh, $100, and I need you to buy $2 million, let's say $20 million of this stock at $100, um, no ifs, ands, or buts. So once they put that order in the market, you get like a really big move out of the market and it creates what we call chaotic candles, okay? Chaotic candles. And what happens is $100 million is not getting filled, folks. What they rely on, okay, is that news that I talked about, that unusual options activity, uh, the volume. And what happens is retail start piling in and we typically, this is us, okay? We're a little bit smaller candles. We're moving and grooving. We're having a good time, but we're not aware of these supply zones. And then boom, this happens. And usually it's really unexpected, okay? And you don't see it, but look what happens. Price comes right into the imbalance and that's where we find where we line up with the institutions. So 
a big part of what I'm going to teach you guys, and you can see it, I'm gonna show you the zones, you see the boxes, and when you're able to identify these, and not only do you have to identify them, but I have indicators that actually find them for you on multiple time frames. okay? On multiple time frames, So it makes it that much easier. We're able to roll out of bed. You can see where your supply and demand zones are and you could trade from those. But that allows you to do a set and forget trade. So let me take a break right now. This over here on the left-hand side, this is my grandson, grandson, Elijah. He'll actually be flying in tomorrow and I'm super pumped. And this is me, my wife over here, and then my two daughters here in the middle. And I have another daughter who's a lot older and she's uh, in Oklahoma, but I love spending time with my family. I love vacationing with Ashley and the fam. I love fishing and I love just hanging out in the hammock, but I'm allowed to do this and I'm able to do this because I understand what beach trades are. So what is the background of what got me here? Well, this is to any furu that's out there. If you don't know what furu is, it is the opposite of a trading guru. Gurus are professionals who have actually put time in the chair, who actually do what they say, and that's what I do. What got me lit up, what put a fire under me and really got me here was the fact that there is so many services that lack transparency, folks, that have false hope, who say things like, hey, look at this. This is what I've made. You can't verify it. You don't know if they made it. But here's the thing. I don't want you chasing PL, folks. I don't want you to trade and, 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 and look for that. What I want you to do is concentrate on a process. We have traders that you know, have, have done so well. And we have traders that can also struggle at times. But what I will tell you is we are very confident that we can make you consistent. Most of all, these guys can't be, they can't be trusted. Okay. And I found that out early on. What was really disappointing was when you took a trade and you made money, don't you want to fish for yourself? So you ask the person like, how do we do this? How is this repeatable? How can I make money every time I step up to the plate? How can I repeat the trade that you just gave me? And what I found out is that nine times out of 10, it's typically just some sort of lotto. I have a process, folks, and I want to show you that whether we do it into FOMC, into earnings, it doesn't matter. I will show you a process. So the last thing that really got me fired up was seeing that gurus actually don't take their trades. They use paper accounts. They tell you they're in a trade. They tell you you're trimming and all those crazy things. And then you're like, you're sitting there thinking why they're trimming a thousand times. You're like, how many contracts did this person just get into? Because when we took the trade, I sure the heck didn't feel like he, got, he bought a hundred contracts, you know? So there, there's always like these subtle things, but I want to provide you guys a level of teaching that is simple, repeatable, and transparent. How much money do you need to trade with? Um, I will show you plenty of examples here, folks. We have traders who have a couple hundred dollars to a couple million dollars. My process works for, like I said before, whether you're a veteran trader or you're just getting started, this is really important for you to understand. But let's talk about transparency. This fires me up. Remember when I talked about the alerts? Nobody's doing this, guys. Nobody is doing this. I mean, some of the biggest services out there are not doing this. And guess what? We're doing it. All right. Check this out. These are straight from the API. All I have to do, I need, I need to make sure you're clear on this. When I click the button, whether it's a buy or sell, it immediately goes to not only the simpler app, but it also goes in my room. Check this out. Milliseconds, not minutes, not seconds. You're not waiting for me to write things down. Milliseconds. Not, and, and then on top of that, you get to see exactly what I pay. You get to see exactly how many contracts I take. And then when I trim, it says trimming. I'm not writing this stuff down. It's all auto. And it lets you know what price that I'm trimming at. And then it then plus or minus, folks, plus or minus, you get to see either I make money or I lose money. So when people are like, hey, how are you doing in your portfolio? Folks, just look at the alerts. Scroll through the alerts. Get an idea. Another question um, is... John, how long do you typically stay in a trade or when, you know, this trade in particular, how long do you want to be in it? Well, I always tell people you can tell by my expiration date. 
So if I'm buying weeklies, I don't plan to be in the trade very long. If I'm buying many, many days out, I'm planning to be in long. I think we just got an HD today and uh, it's about 40 to 60 days out. I'm in plug 200 plus days out, 280, I think it is. Like I trade everything, okay? And I just want to make sure you understand that. So what do you get with these alerts, folks? You don't get cherry picking. You get to see everything I trade. And it's so important you understand that because I'm not just taking the good ones and showing you what I'm doing. I am showing you 100% transparency here. Okay. So I just want to make sure that you understand I built my reputation on being transparent and giving you a process that is repeatable. My passion truly lies in teaching you a repeatable process, folks. So what is the main problem with traditional strategies, okay? Well, for me, again, everybody's a great trader. I'm not saying that traditional trading is bad. I just think that you need a little bit of supply and demand in your life, okay? And you need a good mentor who's going to do what they say. Here's the thing. If 95% of traders are failing, but 95% of them are using the same indicators, then what is your edge? You like truly ask yourself that if you're using an RSI and millions of people are using an RSI, what is that doing for you? Everybody's looking at the same thing. If your indicator is free, the chances are the competition that's out there, the hedgies, right? The institutions, anybody with the bigger money has an easy way to squash you. It might be far, hard to understand because most of us are trading within a realm of a retail trader, including myself, but I don't want to think like a retail trader. Moving indicators versus supply and demand. The big thing here, folks, supply and demand has been around since the inception of the market. On that J&J &J earlier, I showed you the indicators. Well, that was from the 1980s, folks. And I did a demo on where I showed from the 80s where the demand zones worked all the way up until 2023. All you had to do is identify them in advance. So, they just don't move, and that's that's point blank, which you need to understand. Also, most of all, they need too many variables to take a trade. Remember earlier when I was showing you, like, hey, we got to wait for it to come down. Hey, unusual options activity is coming in. Hey, the volume's finally rising. There's too many variables, and by the time you take a trade, you're kind of at that point where people are wanting to trim and get out. So that's very, very important, and I hope you can see that. So here's a trade that I took. This is Netflix. It's 156%. But I want you to understand, and I said this before, it's not about the 156%, guys. It really isn't. It's about, first of all, I'm doing exactly what I say. And you get to see it in milliseconds. Every time I trim. Every time. So there's there's none of this BS like, you know, when does it end, John? When does it, when, how many do you have? Five, three, two, one, boom, he's out for 156%. Now, why did I take this trade? This is important. Remember, I keep talking about the indicators. Well, the indicators make my job that much easier. They identify supply and demand. They identify the banners up here, identify trend for me using my Fibonacci. Okay. The clouds, they give me buy signals. I know I want to be long. And then the ACDC, which we'll be talking about here shortly. I know immediately I want to be in this trade above these red arrows and I want to get out at the trendy edge, which is supply. And what's most important about this is when I got out of the trade, folks, that immediately price fell. And this is a great example of showing you what I'm talking about. And I remember this every time I take a trade and we get out, it's crazy to see how much FOMO is right where we are selling. And for anybody in the room that has been with me by my side and we're trimming these am i not right it is amazing it'll make the hairs on your arm stand up and it's like holy cow now i'm starting to get it it starts to make a lot of sense so j and j i showed this before why is this important because you guys asked me that great question you know it's like how much money do I need to trade with you? Look at this trade, guys. I paid $232 for this trade. I ended up getting out for about $2,500, okay? And, and then to top it off, folks, this is just one of the trades, all right? This is just one of them. I made a lot more than just this. I also did spreads, and I did higher delta options in J&J. &J. But what made me get in? 
Well, it's simple. Once again, the indicators. I got above the cloud. I got the buy signal. I already um, identified the supply zone. And boom, once we got out, look what happened. And I tell you what, go back to this chart today and you will see that the market sold off huge. And it was crazy because we got there before the news. The news was something about their lawsuit. You know, everything was fine and, and price spiked up. But we didn't trade it because of that. We traded it for the reason of supply and demand. NVIDIA, the 2200% I talked about. Again, this is a great example, folks. You don't need a ton of money to trade the strategy that I'm trading. That is true. All right. This is a $159 trade down here that I ended up selling for $3,300. I bought a call for $1.59 and sold for $33. Bucks, okay. A dollar fifty nine, folks, and then up here I did a spread, just like that J and J trade. Now I have this amazing process that I use going into earnings, okay? And I use what's called debit spreads. And if you guys know anything about spreads, then you'll understand that this is a really cool process. I'm using fifty five cents to get into a trade, fifty five dollars, and we end up selling for three dollars and thirty eight cents. That's a five hundred and fourteen percent return. Now. I want to show you something. I'm going to pull it up here uh, in this right here. So I want to show you real fast. And this is what my indicators look like on the chart, folks. So this is your think or swim. And by the way, this comes on trading view as well. Okay. So we're above the cloud. I got buy signals. The lower blue levels are identifying demand. I could see that we came into demand and that we are holding. I am bullish in this trade. I had a buy signal before earnings. So what I did was, and I remember this day, I talked about this. I said, look, folks, this is bullish. Regardless if earnings is coming, we want to find a strategy where we can trade this into a supply zone. We do it at minimal risk, okay? And then the return was huge. And the reason why is because, boom. This is my methodology and it's telling me and I believe in my process and I execute my process. This was a supply zone. Not only did we have our indicator letting us know there was a supply zone, but we also have the structure there. Folks, you see what happens next. Boom, you get paid. It is payday on that particular trade. Now, I know there's winning trades on here and I think what I need to address is like, how do I take care of losing trades. It goes all back to the allocation piece, folks. This is so important. You need to be at a Zen state. Everything I've learned in this 10 plus years, I laugh about this and I actually bring it up probably every other day. So you guys have probably heard me say this before, but this is so important. Trade with an allocation that you're willing to lose. There is no guarantee in the market that you will make money. As soon as you can understand this, it all starts to click, folks. If you have a good process, if your win percentage is high, it is really important to understand that you click the process. But before you do that, make sure that you understand that you can lose the trade. And as soon as you identify with that, this will become Zen-like for you. And I can't wait to show you that. So some key takeaways for today, boom, we wanna line up with the big money, the institutions. Supply and demand levels are where market turns happen. No ifs, ands, or buts, folks. That's where it happens. And here's the thing, if it doesn't, we already know what our risk is before we take the trade. Predictable in advance, yeah. It's definitely predictable in advance. We can go back and find demand zones from the 1980s. We can find them since the inception of the market. And I love to teach that. And matter of fact, folks, Saturday, I have a class where I'm hanging out with you for four hours and I cannot wait to do that. This is my passion to teach you this. And by the time we're finished there, you guys are going to understand exactly how I'm thinking and how I trade. This is, I mean, it's absolutely amazing that I get to do this. And matter of fact, uh, I just feel really lucky and humble to be here. And so again, thank you so much. Look for confirmation at the levels, guys. Trade your risk tolerance. I'm going to keep talking about it. So now you want to like join us. You want to join this community. There's a couple things that I really need to make you understand. One, seven years I own trendy trading. I now am a very happy trader here at Simpler Trading. This is important for you to understand. Seven years I've been selling my indicators, folks. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
that this annual package, this is what I mean by free. I don't care how you look at this. My indicators have been selling for $2,999 for all the entire bundle. And I'm about to take you into a deep dive on those so that you guys understand the value. But those alone, folks, are more than this price. Not only are you getting me on Saturday, all right? for four hours and every single morning, Monday through Friday and all day, and you, you get a great coach, but you have a community of trendy ambassadors. Okay. We have moderators in the room that understand through and through what my process is about. Matter of fact, we shorted the market all day long in the futures when most were trying to buy the dip, just using the indicators, supply and demand strategy class, trading plan sessions, the entire indicator bundle. And if I didn't say it before, guys, that's for Think or Swim and TradingView. Did you guys know that TradingView is amazing because it actually pops up on your mobile? So when I'm out and about, I can literally look at all my process and see it right there on my phone. That's what's so important. Then you get the indicator bundle training. Okay. Very, very important for you to understand that. But you also need to understand this is a promotional deal. This is not going to continue. So please understand that. If you're already a member here at Simpler, what does that mean for you? Well, you, I mean, it's no different. You just get it at even a less cost, okay? So once again, you're getting all of this for a price that I'm gonna tell you right now, this would typically be a price just to hang out for six months to a year inside my old room. So again, the way I look at this, you are getting the indicators for free, guys. You're getting my amazing coaching. You're getting my amazing community. And that's what it's all about. Okay, so tools to make. This is this is what I really want to dive into. Our first webinar, guys. First of all, thank you so much for everybody's like, you know, um, just patience and, and being present and being such, such good traders and wanting to learn. This is where it's all at. And I want to make sure I touched on this tonight. So what are my tools that I use? I use what's called trendy edges. Okay. So let's go ahead and just kind of go through this really quick. Okay. The edge indicator. That's going to identify supply and demand on multiple time frames, okay? Because it's important. I want to make sure that every trader is satisfied here. Maybe you don't like swing and leaps, right? Maybe you don't like being a swing trader. I'm going to show you how to trade different edges on different time frames that are already on your chart. Then you get a scanner. That makes it just that much easier to identify supply and demand. Three, you got the pre-market zone. This is by far one of the most popular indicators, guys. All right. And then on top of that, you get the PMZ scanner. Folks, I'm telling you right now, all this stuff used to be sold separately. It's pretty insane. Over here, you get the band indicator. We'll be going over that here in a second. And then you get the line in the sand. All of this is a bundle. And what's really, really neat about it is that there's a strategy for everybody. And I'm about to show you that here in a second. All right, so the trendy edges, this is the automation, okay? Now, first of all, you're going to notice there's going to be lines on your chart. And I'm going to take you to a live chart here in a second, okay? It's going to look like this. Now, you have the option to do a lot of cool stuff on here, but it has a cloud that's built in that'll look like this if you choose to turn it on. So at first, you know, people are like, oh, it's lines that identify, you know, supply and demand, but it's actually zones, okay? And on the zone itself, the idea is are, you understand your risk, you understand your target and the trade that takes us from this edge into this edge. This is where I'm coaching you. This is where I'm helping you understand how we use the cloud and so forth. Okay. Trendy bands. This is what they look like. I went over them before. The cool thing about these is they have buy and sell signals in them and the momentum changes on the candle. So red Basically, you're underneath the cloud. You get a short signal. You're looking to go short. It turns to neutral. Boom. Just stay neutral. Don't do anything. Wait for your green. Get a buy signal. Boom. Go long. Okay? So once again, very straightforward on those EMA clouds. The PMZ, again, our favorite indicator, especially for intraday traders and future traders. This is absolutely amazing. And I want to show you if you guys can see this on an actual chart in Think or Swim, okay? And it looks just like that, all right? So give me one second. Let's see if we can actually come over here and we are going to bring, uh, 
let's bring uh, let's bring this chart back, and we are going to put ESM23 in here, and I want to show you what this looks like on the chart. Okay. And yes, I will show you the actual trading room just here in a second. As soon as we get this bad boy to load up, all right, we're going to come over here to a five-minute chart. Let's go to intraday. And while we're waiting for that to load, this is what the room looks like, okay, folks? This is what the room looks like, all right? So you can see right here, all right, this is where the screen is going to be, okay? My live trading right here. Over here is where your alerts are going to be. And if you want to look through the alerts and see what they look like, again, like this is our BAC trade that we took today. Um, you can see right there that um, I had 14 left and we started trimming at 39%. Uh, and then we ended up getting 43%. And I have 12 contracts left. They just kind of keep moving that down. Um, right here, uh, we took H HD and I will make annotations, obviously, because I'm here to coach you. So I'll say things like I'm not going to leave you hanging. For example, every time I take a trade, you're going to get a chart. OK, and that chart is going to tell you exactly what I'm looking for. All right. Would you guys like to see that just for a second? I'm going to scroll up here. OK, BAC, half allocation. We have 20 contracts on. This is what my stuff looks like, folks. No questions. There's support. There's the target of $29.96 by $30.99. Once again, folks, I can't make this stuff up. Buy signal above the cloud. I know where supply is. We've already trimmed it for almost 50% there, OK? Again, down here, this is where our members chat. We have an, an explosive, explosive roster. I have some of the best traders I've ever seen across the market. Dave, one of our best future traders in here, helps out the team. That guy shorted the market all day long. I'm going to show you that here in a second. And then we have Melissa, who's just an absolute amazing trader. So when you come over here, this is what it's going to look like. This was your PMZ today, folks. And once again, I can't make this up. I send out notes every single morning to let my crew know what to do. I let them know that the supply zone was here. Traders started uh, shorting here. And then for traders that wanted to short the PMZ, they shorted there. And I'm here to tell you, if anybody's in here from the room, they are going to verify we stuck to this plan. We stayed short underneath this entire cloud today on this, okay? Now, this is your PMZ for the night. Check this out, okay? It, it gets even better. If you like trading at night, we got what it's called a PMZ uh, for the night traders, for the pajama traders. And all you have to do is click one little button and boom, it pops up. Same mechanical process. Long above, stops below, and then we're looking for targets, automated targets to the upside. In this case, it'd just be the line in the sand on this particular trade. What's really neat about the indicators, obviously, is they make trading that much more simpler, but also you can go back and back test them yourself. Okay. So I love, love um, showing that proof of concept there. Okay. So once again, the annual package, this is what you're looking at a little bit cheaper. If you're looking at the, um, you know, if you're already a member, um, the indicators themselves, let's see, showed you the room there. Yep. The PMZ, how we use that on the ES just showed you that. Yeah, let me show you trading view. 100%. So this is what trading view looks like. Okay, here's a great example, folks. Here's HD today. So we were going over this. This is a trendy edge that's identifying demand zones right here. Okay, and once you learn how to identify that demand zone, um, all this is going to make sense. These make it that much easier for you to understand. And look at this demand zone, guys. Just so you understand, the blue ones are based on a yearly demand zone. This thing has been there a year in advance. This is crazy. Look how well it's working. What we're looking for on this particular trade, just to give you a little information, is to break over that cloud and then our targets are up here towards the supply around 310 to 315, right? That's all I need to look at, folks. And another thing, just so I could show you really quick, we are going to bring this over, okay? The scanners. 
the scanners, all I have to do is double click here. This is telling me orange. These are daily supply and demand zones. Yellow, weekly supply and demand zones. Pink, monthly supply and demand zones. Blue, yearly supply and demand zones. One click of a button, folks. That's all I need to do. I can click in here and it takes me immediately to that chart and I have myself a setup. I understand my risk and I know exactly what I want to do when I take the trade. In the morning, our PMZ scanner pops up, okay? And it starts lighting up and it lets us know, depending on the color, what the setup is. Everything I did, folks, is to make this process easier for the trader. Now, the quarterly package, I didn't talk much about it because honestly, folks, why in the heck would you not want uh, some free indicators to go with this strategy, right? But if you're not ready and you're still trying to make that choice, it's $597, a value of $1,094. I'm going to tell you right now, just having us every morning to coach you, the value is extremely high. Um, I want to be able to, to uh, be your lifeguard and be able to teach and get you repeatable every single day. All right. So just as a reminder, our uh, live trading schedule, Monday through Friday, um, this says uh, 8 to 9.30, but the honest, uh, I would say 90% of the time, I'm there at least until 10.30, 11. And then I stay right here in the office. I'm on the Peloton. I'm monitoring. I'm doing everything I need to do uh, to make sure that I'm right here with you. I'm not going to leave you hanging, folks. I told you before, the Furu's got me. I'm coming back for them. If, if they don't have those API alerts and they can't give you a process before things happen, then I don't know. What are you doing? Right? <laughs> so I want to show you that. All right, guys. So if you need any help, 512-266-8659, support at simplertrading.com. And you can also email me at jonathan.mckeever at simplertrading.com. All right. And if you're interested, PayPal has this cool thing. Where it's zero percent interest for six months, uh, which is a really cool deal. You just go to simplertrading.com backslash trendy. All right, guys. So once again, trendy lifestyle. I want to really like hone in on this before we go to Q and A. Um, and, and just know, please, Saturday when we do the class, you can come with all kinds of questions. Okay, but the trendy lifestyle for me, being on the water is my zen, man. I, I believe I am a water sign and I need to be there. I need to be around my family. I love to travel. I was in the Air Force for 21 years. I've been all around the world. I'm very cultured. I love lots of different foods. I love just being in life. But I also understand that there is a work-life balance. And at the end of the day, I want to be able to teach you that. I want you to be able to trade. I want you to be a Zen-like uh, state. And I want you to be able to do all the wonderful things uh, that I know that you deserve. All right. So I'll leave that right there just so you guys can see. Um, and then uh, let's see here. <clears throat> let's see. How many day trades on average uh, presents the supply and demand system during the first one to five hours of the market session for ES and the NASDAQ futures. So um, let's go ahead. Let's get into a little bit of uh, uh, live action here just for a few minutes. Okay. So if we come over here, um, let's just go back two days. Okay. So this is the PMZ and you're asking like, how many sessions can we trade? Well, okay. First of all, the, the PMZ is the most mechanical process out there. It gives you in the morning, it actually tells you what, what your risk is. And then it tells you what your trigger long is and what your trigger short is. Okay. We go long over the PMZ, stops are underneath. We go short underneath the PMZ, stops are above. Okay. And so you can see here how many opportunities you get. Now, obviously, you take the bundle that you're getting. And you're able to use the cloud to kind of help you with those trades when you're trading the PMZ. Notice we come down into an automated level, the trendy edge. And again, I don't have the cloud turned on. But if you did, that cloud would look like this. Basically, we wait for it to come down into the trendy edge. And this is where we look to take the trade. We use our tools down here on the histogram to help us get in the trade. And then we got buy signals for confirmation, folks. Okay. And once again, breaks out here. Once again, breaks out here. And if you want to see back a couple more days, we could do that. Okay, this is what it looks like. This was a huge move out of the PMZ. Matter of fact, folks, this worked, uh, uh, this just a couple days ago, this worked several times. So your question, there's once, twice, 
three, four, this one breaks, but we break back above. You got five trades right there, folks. Okay, pretty cool. Now I will tell you when the market is trending, this bad boy is uh, working very, very well. It is just a methodical, mechanical uh, process that I'm that I'm telling you takes the emotion out of trading. Okay, very, very important to understand that. How do I determine market direction? I love that. So what I do, all right, is that I identify supply and demand on the charts. Okay, every single morning I give a uh, thirty minutes before the market opens. We jump on the mic, we go over our plan, and we identify these zones, okay? So like today, if I take you into a, a one-hour chart, so I'll identify liquidity um, uh, zones and chop zones and basically coach through that and say, hey, guys, this is where they're trying to take liquidity from traders. Um, let's stay patient in here. We'll go long or short underneath the PMZ. But, folks, this was the plan today. I want to show you this. This is this this was the plan. And for anybody that's on our team, they'll tell you these plans work so many times like it's pretty impressive. All right. So this was our supply zone. This is where I wanted traders to get short today. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see it broke down. And the whole entire day I was waiting on the demand zone. And folks, we came right down into the demand zone. We stayed really patient. And that's what happened. So you get you get quite a few. Do your indicators find the supply and demand levels or are you placing them yourself? And do you have a video that goes into detail about the indicators before I invest in your class? So I do 100% show you manually how to find these zones. That is so important. I mean, like my grandpa said, like my, my father's told me, guys, you, you got to like understand how to do something before you understand how things work. But I'm going to tell you this. It doesn't take a whole lot. There's two formations that I'm going to show you that are very easy to find. And then the supply and the demand is automatic and finds it on several different time frames. So when you come in in the morning, what you do is decide, do I want to trade off a of daily edges? Do I want to trade off a of weekly edges and so forth? But we trade them all the same. And I just want to make sure you understand that. All right. So, um, yeah, 100%. I'm going to be uh, teaching you that. All right. John, I'm a student and we'll have the mornings free. Could day trade in, in that time frame or would I need to have a full day to trade? I don't think, no. I do not think you, listen, my plans are set in advance before the morning opens. It depends, like from the ES blueprint, we'll just talk about the ES. We also cover the NASDAQ, just so you know. Uh, the ES blueprint, you could trade the SPY off of and you could trade SPX. Several traders doing awesome. Seriously, awesome. You know, and, th and this is what I say. Don't ask me how I'm doing. Seriously, ask my members how they're doing. And if I have members in here who are on the team, I want you to be as transparent, as honest as possible. Tell the folks here, how are you doing? That's what's important. Does my process work for you? If it works for you, then say so. If you're having a hard time, say so. But I'm here to tell you, I feel super confident that this process will resonate with lots of people. Again, I've been teaching people, thousands of people over the last several years. So yeah, if you have the mornings free, you have the best time to join us in the morning. But you know, if, if, if we're trending, you know, obviously I'll have some trades throughout the day as well. Yeah. So the theory behind my model, James, um, so the theory behind my model is that we're, we're trading supply and demand, right? We want to be on the right side of the institutions, okay? The idea is to pinpoint these pivotal points in the market. It's really not that difficult. The bigger candles, the structure gives us a story of where they're lining up. The trendy edges help to identify those levels in advance. So when we wake up in the morning, we look for those levels, we understand where they're at, then we discuss the PMZ so that, you know, choppy conditions right? Choppy conditions, that doesn't mean that you have to sit on your hands. Matter of fact, one of the great remarks that I heard today, one of the best feedbacks I heard in a long time was like, John, it has been a long time since I could do so well in a choppy market. I love that. That just made me so happy to hear that because really the levels work, folks. All right. All you got to do is learn how to trade them. So the theory is supply and demand, 
I teach you how to execute them by using the tools and then you just wait for them. I am teaching you how to fish, folks. There is nothing that I am keeping from you. Do you understand that? So you're given these indicators. I teach you on Saturday. You're going to be ready on Monday. All right. So that's that's what's exciting about this. Um, can we identify entry stops and exits without indicators for intraday, five minute trading and so forth? Yes. I'm going to teach you this on Saturday as well. Yep. So the PMZ, no, I can't do that. So the PMZ itself, it's proprietary. It's been around for, like I said, about seven years. So if I gave you the exact instructions, but what I can tell you is this, what I do, all right, let me give you a little bit of background about the PMZ because it's amazing. Um, the pre-market zone, when I first started trading, I kept hearing traders say that pre-market action had no volume, but yet it wasn't important. Okay, listen to me. So we had the pre-market, let's just call this the pre-market, okay? And, you know, the day yesterday we had some moves, say the market did something like this, okay? The pre-market, this time frame right in here, between here and here, I was always told didn't matter because there was no volume in the market. But what I kept noticing is that when the market's trending, or depending on which way the banners are pointing and looking at this, there was something very significant about it. So what I was able to do is extract the data from the pre-market and find the most top quality levels to trade off of. So that's what that's about. What size account are your uh, trade quantities set for? So uh, James, for, wait a minute, let me make sure. When a, rec when a recommendation is made, what is your approximate price of options you use or are you using spreads? Uh, Doug, so um, for us, um, so it's all about your allocation. What are you comfortable with? So um, if you're trading $500 worth, you know, as far as deltas are concerned, um, you can go with the at the money delta. I don't really get into uh, the point of telling you what delta you should use. Um, it's pretty straightforward, though. If you have a good process and the in the in the stock or the futures move over the PMZ, right? Then we're going to get paid, right? We're going to get paid here. Now there are things called Greeks and stuff like that towards the end of the week that you want to be aware of. But what I'm looking at, you know, you don't want to get like too silly with it. Um, I've gotten pretty silly though, out of the money. You could see that with J and J. But the thing is, is I knew where supply zones were. And if you don't know this, price moves from demand to supply. Matter of fact, see this yellow line? This is our demand zone, folks. And right now the ES is bidding above that. All right. So I can't make this stuff up. It's going to happen right here in front of your eyes. All right. And you, and you know, our traders know that they see that every day. So what size account are your trade quantities set for? So again, a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars for me personally, if you want to know what I trade, 100 to 500 bucks, max probably $2,500. Now that's not, you know, futures. If I want to trade four or five contracts, for example, uh, if I were to come over here and I wanted to trade uh, futures right now, you could see like if I do uh, uh, four contracts, it's going to cost me, you know, this much money. So futures is a little bit different, but, uh, you know, just, just understand that. All right. How am I identifying the trade, the symbol? That's a great question. So remember uh, this right here. Give me one second. Boom. All right. So I got like my, um, you know, pretty much like top 50 names. And they change from here, here and there. But this is how I identify it. This is what I'm saying. I can wake up, get out of bed, come over here and go, okay, which one's at a lower edge? All right. And if it's at a lower edge, then perhaps I take the trade to the upside. For example, I click on YM, right? This is Dow Jones. We'll come over here. Let's do YM23. Whoops. YMM23. Let me get the, the right chart up here just really quick. Let's pull this bad boy up. Give me one second. And let's do this one. Oh, this is pretty neat. This is that, that uh, BAC trade. So I was teaching people today how to use your option and put it on a chart like this. This is a premium chart. And we're taking trades based off of my levels. Check this out, folks. Your indicators are plotted on your active trader. This is insane. And uh, people love this this morning. So like if we scroll over this, this is your edge. We know that we want to be long above the edge. And all I have to do is come up here and look at my edges on a premium indicator. If you don't know what that means, 
This is the price of the actual option. See that 37, 44, 52, 74. I know exactly where I want to sell. So all I have to do is come in here, find my indicators on the premium or on the active trader and just set my cells up there. That is absolutely insane. A lot of people don't even know you can do that. It's pretty cool. How is the breakdown in supply and demand uh, indicated for exit or keep trade? How is breakdown in supply and demand indicated for exit or keep trade? Yeah. So the way that this works, so I'm going to take you to this every single time. All right. And this is important to understand. What am I going to say is that you should be comfortable with the amount of money allocation that you're putting into a trade. Okay. So that's the first thing. If the zone breaks and it closes underneath, then a trader could close out the trade. I do not use percentage as a reason to get out of a trade. Okay. Because you have to understand where a demand zone is. All right. Check this out, guys. This is the Dow Jones. Again, I can't make this stuff up. I teach you how to take the trade from the trendy zone or trendy edge that identifies demand. And then as you can see, we push up, we break through the cloud, another reason to get long, and then we stall here at the trendy edge. Matter of fact, see this edge right here? It's a great example. This right here, this is a supply zone, okay? That's the identification of the, the uh, candle structure, but you already have the trendy edge there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when price was pulling back that demo that I gave you earlier, we already know where the edges are. We know, we understand what to look for. We take the trade and then you wait for the trade to move up. Remember, <laughs> this is kind of cool. It moves up to the midpoint. It flags, just like I told you, most traders start to get out. We stay in as long as the cloud holds and then we wait for price to hit that edge. Yeah, great one. Uh, that's a great one. So uh, how far in advance are the buy and signals printed for the EMA cloud? So for the EMA cloud itself, let's see, let's go over. Um, let's go to give me this right here. Let me go to actually while we're sitting here. All right. Let's go to backslash ESM23. I love that question, by the way. Because when, when I first started trading, I was like, you know, if somebody's like buy signal comes in like crazy late, like what does that matter? Okay. I just realized I needed to get some. I don't know why MU went on there. That's weird. There we go. There you are, baby. So check this out. Let's see if we can see it in real time. Uh, Will, what if you're not familiar with spreads? If you're not familiar with spreads, that's not all I trade. I would say that spreads are like maybe 25% of what I trade. Yeah. But if you're not familiar with them, then I always tell people, you know, reach out to your broker, but I'm going to teach you how to trade spreads around my levels. Yeah. Okay. So what happens on the indicator itself, all right, is that it's looking for formations so once it, it it passes the criteria of a formation, you get the buy signal. And we'll go into more of that on Saturday. And that's the cool thing about Saturday is once you sign up, guys, everything's like thrown out on the table. We're going to talk about everything. Yeah, so um, let's see. Join and watch this for stocks. Is there a particular reason for the stocks on the list based on the S&P and the weight of the stocks? So, yeah, I mean, you know, for me, the weight of the stock is important. We talk about it a lot in the room. So if I'm if I'm targeting a specific index or something like that, uh, we'll discuss those type of things at the at the moment. But, you know, I just have a go to uh, handful of stocks that they just listen. When you identify supply and demand on a chart, there's 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 just a whole lot you know, that you start understanding is that prices move from supply and demand. I don't care what name you put on the chart. We have traders that came in the room not too long ago that are doing good in Bitcoin, folks. Bitcoin futures. Traders making money in Bitcoin futures using PMZ, uh, the cloud, and so forth. So like I said, th if you're using a chart, this will work on it. And obviously, like not every trade is going to work. What is really important about the system is understanding that um, you're able, okay, it's, it's, it's really, really important to understand, you know, that this is about understanding consistency, to be able to put this stuff together, 
to be able to trade it before price gets there. This is what separates this from almost every process that I've learned in the past. We know what to do when price gets to the levels. <clears throat> Roughly speaking, how percent of your trades are in ES? So every single morning, Sean, every single morning, we start with the ES futures, okay? Here, let me show you really quick. Let's get back over here to the room just so you guys can get an understanding, okay? So we're going to pull this up, and let's get to this morning's notes, okay? Just bear with me, please, for a second. I want you guys to see what you're going to get. All right, so you ready for this? So first of all, the screen's going to be on. You're going to see my charts. Uh, I'm going to upload the chart. All right, and let's scroll up. I don't know how that went away so quick. All right. And right, right here. Good morning. Overall, the market feels pretty flat, but I see some interest around the, around oil and still, uh, uh, you know, travel stocks. Interesting here, I would look closer towards the end of the week. ES, level, supply zone. Remember I told you guys? 4,300 to 40 to 4305. So basically what I'm telling people is this is where we go short. Look at your chart right now and tell me if it didn't work. Chop 4295 by 4288. Daily demand 4272 by 68. Where did the ES futures stall today, folks? Okay. So there's, you know, this is the thing. I will discuss the PMZ before the market opened. We went over the PMZ. We traded the PMZ. Every single day we go over the ES and the NASDAQ. All right. It's up to you if you want to trade SPY off of my ES Blueprint or SBX. And on NASDAQ, you could trade the QQQs if you like. Okay. All right. So like on this one, boom, this worked out well. So Tesla made uh, about 80%. We sold these for about five bucks. And then Baba, I lost 50% on a $500 trade. And then um, this one right here, complete, complete crap show on that particular one. But overall a green day and that's what i love all right so yeah when do you uh determine to exit losing trades again for me losing before i take a trade this is really important to understand you before you take a trade folks there's one guarantee in trading you will lose money. Does everybody understand that? If you think that every time you take a trade, you're going to make money, it is the wrong way to think. You're just going to get upset. So what I would rather focus on is that you understand your loss before you take a trade. All right. Now the exit criteria will be interesting. And again, we'll talk about this on Saturday, but the whole thing is, let's say we, we do a $500. I'm okay with losing 500 bucks. If I let it go to zero and I lose 500 bucks, is that a bad thing? No. If I take a $2,500 trade and I let, I let it go to zero, that's a bad thing. If I let 2,500 bucks, if I lose 500 out of that 2,500, then I stuck to my plan, guys. And that's what I want to teach you on Saturday. It's super, super important. So it's not, it's not based off of uh, Terry. It's not based off a of percentage. It's based off of my, my levels. If my levels are not holding and, and you know, it breaks down, we're going, we're going to lose. Matter of fact, did you know that percentages on your chart, in my opinion, are there to really hinder your performance? Because how many of you have been in a trade, the, the percentage looks terrible, but it hasn't broken your process. And then all of a sudden it goes right back up, but you took a loss because your percentage was down. I'm telling you right now, if you trade with the right amount of allocation, you don't look at percentage. You look at process. It's, hey, I'm staying in this trade as long as price stays above the demand zone. Hey, I'm staying in this short as long as price stays under the supply zone. That's how I want you to start thinking. My concern is my account is 20,000. If you're uh, taking many trades a day, how do I manage my ex exposure in the market? So your account is 20,000. My account was uh, you know, less than 20,000 for a very long time. Matter of fact, my Ashley account, as I call it, uh, which is my wife, by the way, we talk about Ashley's account all the time. It's sitting right behind me. That's that account right there. Um, that is less than $20,000. Uh, it is very much up on the year. And uh, how do I do it? I do it the same way I'm telling you. I take every trade. I understand my risk before I, I take a trade. I take the same trades that I'm showing you and uh, it's doing just fine. $20,000 is not a, that's not an issue, you know? And, and when you say how many, like how many trades, 
uh, for me, there's not, there's not that many trades, you know, you're in and out, right? Intraday trading, understand your portfolio. I have several uh, swing trades that are anywhere from 200 plus days to 50 days. And then I have this little block every sing single day I open, I am open to take in two to four trades in and out. Okay. If I just sat around and waited for my swing trades all the time, that'd be a pretty boring uh, uh, service. Let's see if there's a big flush, does your demand zone change with price action uh, dynamically? Heck no, absolutely not. They are stationary. What happens, This that's an awesome question. Uh, what happens is that we look for the demand zone on high time frames. So um, we recognize and identify demand or supply anything from a yearly to a uh, quarterly when we have big flushes. Okay. I'll be showing that on Saturday too. These things will make your hair stand up. Seriously. You'll be looking at it and the lights will pop on and you'll be like, where were you my whole entire life? Supply and demand. It's pretty neat. Uh, Ram, are those buy arrows based on candle patterns? Uh, they're, they're based on uh, several different formations. How do you use TTM Pro to validate your trades? I use the histogram. No. We trade futures. What platform do you execute your trades on due to large slippage and delay? Man, I don't have a problem with that, Bob. Yeah. I mean, during high volatility moments like FOMC, we did a live trade uh, uh, several months ago where I had an entry at demand. And so what did happen, and I shared my conversation with uh, TO TOS representatives, is that my order didn't get picked up and it immediately went up like 40 points, but it didn't pick up my order. It literally went to my order a little bit past my order. And that slippage, unfortunately, caused me not to be in the trade. So I have had zero problems with Thinkorswim. It's funny when I hear that. I've had no problems with Thinkorswim. So anyways, guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up. And we have uh, the Saturday class. Don't forget that. Um, I can't wait to see you over there. I can't wait to teach you. Um, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be an eye opener. And uh, for any existing members that are in here, I can't wait to see you folks. Again, that is going to be Saturday uh, from 12 to 4. And it will be recorded. So even if you can't make it, um, you'll be able to watch that again. Okay? All right. I think we're good. Are we good to go? All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful night.